It's been 60 years since President John F. Kennedy was assassinated while riding in a motorcade through Dallas, Texas. The youngest ever elected president and dad of two had just started his campaign for a second term and was planning on touring throughout the state. A lover of poetry, a sailor, devoted father, a man of charm, grace, and eloquence. John F. Kennedy has been in office for exactly 1,036 days. There are some important accomplishments. He has negotiated a nuclear test ban treaty with the Russians, established the Peace Corps, set in motion the steps that would put America on the moon. But there are also many doubts. Beneath the glitter and the glamour, people still wonder about the substance of the Kennedy presidency. JFK hopes to still all doubts in a second term. Texas, with its 24 electoral votes, is considered critical to re-election in 1964. A political tour of the state is mounted. There remains only Dallas to be won back into the Kennedy electoral fold. The men are ready. The machines are ready. Now we know the dream will be achieved. The challenge will be met. In 10 short years, we have come a long way, but man's journey into space has just begun. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. It will not be one man going to the moon. We make this judgment affirmatively. It will be an entire nation. The real issue facing the American people is how it's going to be possible for us to rebuild our strength and the strength of the free world relative to that of the Soviets so that future negotiations could be fruitful. Talking tough does not conceal the lack of long-range planning and military strength. At 125, the motorcade moves into the downtown area. Death is six minutes away. In a warehouse, a sniper with a rifle poised waits. Gunfire reverberated through the plaza and crowds of supporters watched in fear as their beloved president crumpled in the limousine. He was struck in the head and neck and was raced to Parkland Memorial Hospital where a Catholic priest gave him his last rites. Hours after Kennedy was cleared dead, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn into office with Jackie standing by his side. John John celebrates his third birthday with a soldier's farewell to his father. On Monday, November 25, 1964, JFK was laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. Government officials from hundreds of countries showed up to offer their condolences, and millions more heartbroken Americans watched on television. Lee Harvey Oswald was hiding in the nearby Texas School Book Depository when he pulled out a rifle and took aim at Kennedy. After he was taken in, Oswald denied any wrongdoing to police and told outright lies to protect himself and hide any details on what happened. Adding to the mystery was Oswald's untimely death just days after the assassination. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. 